How's it going, everyone? I hope you're all doing well today. So I've gotten a couple requests for this, and I really want to talk about Synergy today. So we're going to put off the third part of the Shield Guy while I try to figure out, you know, uh, the collabs and, you know, what is going to be in there and all that stuff. But for right now, I think it's really good to talk about Synergy in this game. So what is Synergy as an overall concept? So Synergy is basically the way two or more things work together. So let's look at this in like a work context. So if I'm working in say like a hospital, right? We have the doctors, we have the nurses, we have the administration, we have the admin workers, the people who work the front desk, receptionists, people like that. So good Synergy means that they're all on the same page and they work well off of each other. So that would mean like, a patient comes in, gets an appointment with the receptionist who can relay that over to the nurse, who can relay that to the doctor, doctor can relay that to the administration, and whatever. I don't know all the paperwork and that stuff, but basically they're all able to work as a cohesive unit and put out a good product, which is medical service to us. So how does this apply to dead cells? So Synergy works in a million different types of ways. I'll try to address as much of it as I can. I'll try to get to all of it. But basically, we have certain weapons, certain skills, certain mutations, and certain builds that will emphasize on synergy. So an example of this could be something that gives you poison and a weapon that does 100% to poison. So uh, let's say, for example, that I have like an alchemic carbine, and then I have a torch that does 100% damage to poison. So that's a basic example of synergy. Another example of synergy can be something like Oh, like, I have a shield that applies bleed damage, and then I also have a Sata Stiletto. So, the Bloodthirsty Shield applies bleed to an enemy. The Sata Stiletto does crits to enemies that are bleeding or poisoned. So, that's another example of synergy. So, we're going to take a look at different types of synergy. So, we're going to take a look at status synergy. So, that's like your blood, your freeze, poison, burn, etc. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at build synergy. So, an overall build that's dedicated to synergy. Uh, we're going to take a look at mutations, and then we're going to look at what some of the best synergies are in this game. So I hope you guys get some good information from this. Uh, you can leave a like, subscribe for more Dead Cells content, and enjoy the guide, everybody. So let's take a look at this build that I have real quick. So this is a Sata Stiletto build, and the reason I chose Sata Stiletto as the example is because it's kind of the easiest to show off synergy for. So... For those of you who don't know or haven't unlocked this weapon, Sata Stiletto is a melee weapon that does critical hits if the target is bleeding or poisoned. So let's look at where I have bleeding and poison. And it doesn't come from stuff that you may expect. So the first thing we see is that Alchemic Carbine poisons the victim, creates a toxic cloud. That gets me crits if I just shoot the Alchemic Carbine, hit the Sata Stiletto. Uh, the Cleaver also gives me uh, bleed, so that'll also give me a 100% or it'll give me a 60% to bleed, and it'll also get me crits. And I forgot to mention that the car that the stiletto also has 100% to poison, so the carbine will give it poison as well. But, something to note, and you don't see this on the screen, but the cleaver also generates a toxic cloud around the trap. It's a very popular affix with the uh, traps and turrets, so if you get an affix like that, it's very, very, very good to take. Also gives me 100% to poison. So the cleaver kind of self-synergizes, gives you it gives itself toxic, and it does 100% to poison, which is amazing. That also gives me double crits on the Sata Stiletto, because I have the crit from the poison, I have the crit from the bleeding. I have 100% to poison, I have 60% to bleeding. So right off the bat, you can see where that damage starts to skyrocket. So the crit damage is 109 thousand right so the 100 percent to poison so times two it's 218 plus another 60 percent that's going to be about let's say 350 something like that so 350 damage for one strike is massive and and even on 5bc where the damage is capped it it, it it's very very quick a uh, phaser also can give me bleed because I have something called open wounds. So what open wounds does is that if you hit a enemy with the with a melee attack, you get bleed. And so with the Sata Stiletto, that obviously works because I can just keep striking the enemy, keep getting bleeding stacks, and get 60% of bleed and get critical hits. With the phaser, phaser is a melee skill. So when you use melee, you teleport behind the enemy and you will apply bleed. And then, as well, you will also be able to get the additional damage from Phaser onto Stiletto and get a critical hit as well. So that's another 
33,000 added on to that. So that's like a brief example into how this build is like so synergized into each other. Another example is earlier in this build, I had a fire grenade and so the f in place of the cleaver. So the fire grenade, what that does is that it gives burn, obviously, to a bunch of targets at once. So the Sadist Stiletto also gives me 30% to burn. Carbine and the Phaser also give 30% to burn. So those damages are also increased. So that's a brief example into how the synergy kind of goes into each other. And synergy is so important because if I had none of these weapons, I just had the Stiletto, no open wounds, no Carbine, no Cleaver, no Phaser. It was just a Stiletto. I'm only doing 50,000 at the most. Which even on like 2BC is not much at all. But because of all the synergy, I'm exceeding 400,000 damage when I use the phaser, 300,000 damage otherwise. Which is a lot. It's a lot of damage just to be getting off. And you smoke enemies and bombs. You do a lot of damage against bosses. So it's really important to remember that how your weapons work together is so, so, so necessary. Here's another example of a build with the oil sword that gives me, not only does it give me burn, but it also gives me crit. So the oil sword is a weapon that induces inflammable oil and inflicts critical hit for 10 seconds if the enemy is on fire. So I have the firebrands, I had the firebrands unlocked, throw the firebrands, instant burn, oil sword, easy synergy. Flame turret gives me the inflammable oil and the flame. So the inflammable works with fire in such a way that the fire stacks will double. So I have the flame turret, and that gives me burn, inflammable oil, and it gives me the critical hits on the oil sword, plus the 30% to burn affix that's already on the oil sword. Also important to note is that the flame turret also has the generates a toxic cloud around the trap affix, which gives me poison, and that gives me 100% to poison for the flame turret and for the oil sword as well. I have the open wounds mutation giving me the 60% to bleed on the oil sword, 60% uh, to bleed on the firebrands, the flame turret, and the lacerating aura. Lacerating aura gives me a lot of chip damage and does 30% to burn. The enemy will be constantly burned uh, just because I'm applying a lot of oil, firebrands, flame turret. So it gives me a lot of damage. And because of this, I was able to just smoke through the entire biome like that. So one of the most popular builds to use in high level play is DOT. So what DOT stands for is damage over time. And what that means is it's exactly what it sounds like. You have damage that you apply on an enemy and that'll last over time. So this is an example of a DOT build. I have the Hakuto's Bow, which is one of the biggest weapons that you can use in order to get immediate synergy. So what it does is that you strike an enemy and it'll be marked. So in this case, it's 42,000 DPS for 20 seconds. And when you kill that enemy, that mark spreads in an area of effect to all surrounding enemies that fall within that area of effect. And what that leads to is a lot of very, very quick kills when it comes to stuff like the Alchemic Carbine, Flame Turret, Lacerating Aura, things like that. And it really allows you to get a lot of quick kills off. It works a lot better in practice than it may seem in theory because you're not getting these immediate hits off. But if you are still kind of questioning it even after this video, I am planning on doing a DOT type of guide at some point, maybe in the next week or so. Leave a comment if you want to see that. But Kudos Bow can also be paired with pretty much any weapon that is a tactics or brutality weapon. For example, I love using this with shields. So stuff like the Bloodthirsty Shield or the Thunder Shield... I have runs where I make use of both of those. I'll try to leave those in the description as well. You can also use it with stuff like the Blood Sword or Magic Missiles or really just any weapon, to be honest, because Hakuto's Bow is one of those weapons that is entirely made for synergy. And if we remember what the definition of synergy is, it is what allows your build to do the most possible amount of damage, what allows you to be able to succeed in Dead Cells, and Hakuto's Bow is the prime example of that. So here I have the Carbine, Flame Turret, Lacerating Aura. The Carbine does additional damage to burning targets, Lacerating Aura does additional damage to burning and poison targets, which is relevant for the Carbine and the Flame Turret. Flame Turret also self-synergizes because that's generally what I like to do. I have burning the, down, the, burning the ground when I dodge, so that's additional burning. So it really is a build that plays off each other very well. You get a lot of very, very quick kills with it. Uh, this is one of the prime examples of 
why synergy is so important. Here's an example of a build that doesn't necessarily get its synergy through status effects. It certainly does have some benefits to it, such as the flame turret having that self synergy with the toxic cloud and the 100% to poison. But the infantry bow and the phaser is a combination that synergizes so well together. So the phaser will teleport you right behind the enemy. The infantry bow does critical hits if you're close range. So I use the phaser on an enemy, I get the critical hits with the infantry bow, and that's how you get that synergy together. And then you can do one shots on pretty much any enemy in a biome, and with bosses you do a significant amount of damage. Especially if you are at full health and you get that 50% when you're at max HP, critical hits already do 20% damage. And then I have a shield just so I can parry things. So it's also about not just the affixes in terms of, you know, getting poison, burn, bleed, etc. But it's also about how the skills can make a weapon better. And in this case, the phaser makes the infantry bow much, much better. So an example of this in a survival context is that you're not necessarily going to be getting statuses in survival. Uh, they're fairly rare to come by. So how does this work out in a survival context? Well, you have a shield in the punishment shield in this example. You can also use stuff like ramparts. You can use cudgel, things like that. And shields, what they allow you to do is parry enemies, obviously. But more than that, they also allow you to create space, block attacks, and give you enough room for you to fire off your main attack. And in this case, I'm using the Rhythm and Bazooki. So the Rhythm and Bazooki is a pretty fast melee survival weapon. You have to time it correctly to get all the crits off. So Punishment, what it'll do is that I'll end up parrying an attack, and then I can use the Rhythm and Bazooki to get a couple hits off. Uh, Mushroom Boy is in this build because when I'm dealing with mobs, sometimes the enemy will come up and attack me, and I don't have enough time to parry or get an attack off. So the Mushroom Boy will interrupt that attack. And that allows me to get more help within this build. Synergy can also be described as additional help. So in this case, the main f source of damage that I'm going to be doing is the Rhythm and Bazooki. Mushroom Boy is more of an assistant rather than applying, you know, any sort of affix that'll maximize the damage for the Rhythm and Bazooki. In this case, it's more of, hey, let's play safe. Let's make sure that we don't get attacked. And it also deals well with mods because when you trigger it, it'll explode and kill a bunch of enemies at once, which really helps out with mob management. Another example of synergy is when you build an entire set to revolve around one thing. And there's been a few examples of this so far, but here it's much more explicit. And in this case, we're talking about the oil grenade. So the oil grenade applies oil to a bunch of different platforms. And in boss arenas, it'll apply to pretty much the entire stage. So I have two weapons that do critical hits with the oil grenade. And that's the ice shard and the fire blast. So the ice shard has that 30% to burn. Fire blast doesn't have any explicit synergies with it, but it does pair well with that oil grenade because of those crits that I get. It's 106,000 for each critical hit that I get, which is a ton. Ice shards is 124,000. Again, it's a lot. The Owl is giving me 30% to burn. So combine the Fire Blast with the Oil Grenade. My Fire Stacks are pretty unlimited. Owl gets a lot of damage off. I have the Instinct of the Master of Arms, which gives me a reduction in crit in uh, the cooldowns. So the Owl, I can just set it off, get that cooldown real quickly. Oil Grenade, that same thing. So it's really one of those things where I'm applying oil to a bunch of different things and centering it purely around oil. And Ice Shards and Fire Blast can do what they need to do at that point. Another thing to point out with the build is that Ice Shards is one of those weapons that'll slow down enemies. So I can use it against a, a, an Elite, for example. And then I can use the Fire Blast to be able to get a lot of crits off without having to worry about dodging or anything like that. So it's very, very useful in that context. Uh, for those who have a keen eye, this is the exact build that I used in my Oil Guide. So for those who are interested in watching it, I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. So this final example is a build that I kind of just got out of nowhere and I decided just to go full on with it. So you can see this Magic Missiles is 300% damage inflicted, 300% damage taken. So what does that mean? It means that on 5 BC or even any BC, any hit that I take is pretty much going to kill me. So how do we mitigate this? Well, we go as hard as we can on the damage. So we have the Boy's Axe that snares enemies, uh, does 100% damage to poison targets, uh, and the Boy's Axe will give me that poison. Uh, Double Cross Bomatic leaves a trail of flames and does 30% to burn. 
Magic Missiles also does 30% to burn. And the Knife Dance does damage to bleeding and poison. Double Cross Bematic does a bleeding affix that will synergize well with the Knife Dance, but I don't have bleeding anywhere else. So what this means is that I have four skills that in some way synergize very well with each other. I also have the Support Mutation, which synergizes with the Double Cross Bematic, because in boss battles I'm going to be very, very close by to it. Uh, so it's really a kill or be killed type of build. So once I get that poison off, then I can start firing off the magic missiles. Double cross bomatic will be doing damage on its own. Knife dance will be doing damage. And so what you end up getting is a crap ton of damage in such a short amount of time. And that's the basic idea of this build. Just get as much damage as you can in a short amount of time. The magic missiles is my primary form of damage. Everything else is centered around maximizing the amount of damage that I can possibly do on that magic missiles. So that's going to be it for this brief synergy guide. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you all got some good information about it. Uh, you can see in this end clip right here that synergy is no joke. Against this Hand of the King fight I'm just able to get so many hits off and just smoke all of these elites and the boss and just all that stuff and then that actually is what allows me to get that no hit. So if you're really struggling Keep in mind, synergy is much more important than base damage on high level play. Weapons that you may not consider initially are so, so, so powerful with the right synergy. And like I said, it's not just affixes, but it's also how weapons work well with each other. So my best advice is just to try different things out. I would have never guessed that Boyzax, for example, does such good synergy with a lot of weapons because it snares enemies, which allows you to get a lot of hits off. So it's just things like that. Be mindful of the fact that not every build you're going to try is going to work. Not everything you do is going to work in this game, but it's about trying and really just seeing what works well for you. Thank you guys so much again. I always appreciate you guys hanging out and watching my videos and being up in the comments. You can leave a like. Subscribe for more Death Cells content, and I'll see you guys on the next one. One day I woke up, I didn't have shit. I had to work hard just to grab this. Blue faces stacked up, that's my fetish. I'm ready, I'm ready for these bandages. They said I wouldn't make it, who asked to? I got brought into this life I didn't ask to. I'ma make most of it all, cause I had to. You get money from your mama, I chase it because I had to.